Welcome to Issues and Answers with your host, Diane Kinderwater. Issues and Answers is presented as a public service to inform, educate, and better the lives of New Mexicans. And now, Issues and Answers with your host, Diane Kinderwater. Welcome to the program. I'm Diane Kinderwater. In a minute, you are going to see an oasis. You're going to see the Garden of Eden right here in our studios because we're going to be discussing the Council of Albuquerque Garden Clubs, and they brought a lot of their beauty right here in our studio. So this is a little bit of teaser after this PSA. You stay with us as we discuss gardening in Albuquerque and what the Council of Albuquerque Garden Clubs has to offer you, and it's quite a bit. So please stay with us. We'll be back right after this. I promised you a Garden of Eden and I've delivered it. We're like in an oasis here in our studios in Albuquerque. And I've got my gardening hat and I've got my kind of dirty gardening gloves with me as we discuss the Albuquerque, the Council of Albuquerque Garden Clubs with uh, Francis Robertson. Thank you so much, Francis. Thank you for bringing me this Garden of Eden. And a wide shot for Francis as well. There we go. You're welcome. Quite an effort, Francis. Thank you. Yes, it was an effort. <laughs> it was delightful, though. These are gorgeous plants, and uh, they, some of them come from my garden, and some come from uh, Osuna Nursery, who, who were generous enough to let me borrow some because I, I wanted to show what a Zeric garden might look like, and we'll talk about that later. And that's a lot with the Council of Albuquerque Gardens. Um, since I invited you to be in the program, I learned a lot more about the Council of Albuquerque Gardens. You're going to give us the history, but I wanted to share that actually your facility on I-40 in Louisiana, if you haven't visited, you need to go there because you have so much to offer there, including a beautiful place like this that we can have a wedding, um, you can have a business meeting, you can have retreats at that facility and we don't offer that very many places in Albuquerque. No, and it's a beautiful facility and it came to be in the most interesting kind of way. Um, Los Altos Park was, uh, may, may I talk about this? Sure. Uh, Los Altos Park was designated as a, as a park and in that time the Garden Council had been working and saving money for something like uh, since the 50s to have a building built. They uh, eventually, and I'd, I'd like to talk more about this, but I don't think we want to get to this point now, but anyway, they got, finally got the city fathers to get interested in it through much effort on their part. And uh, they, they uh, raised a huge amount of money. The building cost in 1976, this was the amount, $190,000. And these garden clubs and people all over the city helped helped contribute. There were bake sales, there were plant sales, there were pie sales, there were festivals and fairs and everything. Anything to do that would get people to come and get interested in Why the Why was it so, so important to have a private facility for the Council of Albuquerque well, Garden Well, the originally Albuquerque had, believe it or not, in the 50s, something like 29 garden groups. Not all garden clubs, but some of them were societies, some of them were just the Violet Society, etc. And so these 29 groups were in the same boat in this situation. They, um, they got together because our soil in, in New Mexico, in, in Albuquerque area, because we have the Sandias, and most of our soil is um, eroded Sandia gravel and sand and then clay. And it's a very difficult soil. And these, these garden clubs were having difficulty finding plants that would fit this difficult soil. So they kind of got together and started thinking in, as one how they could get the plants they wanted and what they needed. And um, early in the 50s, they elected a council. They got together and called themselves the council where they had more, um, where they, where they had more um, opportunity to buy and to, to organize and to make a difference. So anyway, they got together. The council became the council of Albuquerque Garden Clubs, which is the name. And um, anyway, 
they began then to realize that the garden center would be a really good idea. N nobody believed it. The city fathers at that time in, in the 50s weren't interested, and they weren't even interested in the 70s. But these ladies that uh, per persevered in the council, the, the leaders, wow. they kept going. And it, it's a huge history. In, 1960, in 1962, something like that, they started this fund. I mean, and the, the event of the building didn't happen until 76. And so they started this fund for this club, for this building, and they, hi they asked one of their members to be a representative for it. And what she did is she wrote all of the cities all over the, all over, all over the United States to find out. They, she wrote the cities that she knew had the garden centers and talked to them about what were the advantages, what were the benefits for the city, why do it, was it worth it, blah, blah, blah. And she got all these positive reports back. So she took these positive reports, made a file, and took them to the city fathers, who really, they didn't get it. At that point, they didn't understand the, the importance of a garden center, that it could be this meeting place, that it could be some place that all of these clubs could come and solve problems for gardening. And gardening in, in Albuquerque and in New Mexico in general is not easy because we live, our, our elevation is about 4,200 to about 6,700 feet, and the soil is, as I just said, is extremely difficult to, to, to garden in. So people needed help, and they wanted help. And so what happened was um, they didn't give up. The city fathers weren't interested at that time. They came back later with a new plan. Some of the letters that they had received from these other cities had told them that uh, Sears and Roebuck had been most helpful in their development of their centers. So these ladies go to, this wow. is like, <laughs> this is like the 67, uh, actually it was 65. They go to Sears, which had, which had just opened this new store in Coronado. You may remember, yeah. I've, I've been here yep. a long time. Coronado just opened in about, what, 65? So they went to the new store in 65 and said, would you be interested in, in letting us have a gardening information center? Well, Sears was very generous. They said, why, yes, that'd be great. So they came and they did, they worked on Saturdays and Sundays and they answered questions. And Sears even set up a phone line for them wow. so they could take calls. I mean, it was, it was really a wonderful community uh, organization together that made oh, yeah. this happen. Well, it lasted about a year. And then the uh, Garden Council realized that they were they weren't getting to, to enough people because just Sears shoppers, just <laughs> Sears shoppers, and and sometimes Sears would actually say, "Be sure you come because we've got the garden, yeah. the council, the garden club members here to answer your yeah. questions." So they, unless Sears advertised yeah. it, they really just had the Sears shoppers. So they said, "Well, we'll try something else." Well, at that point, uh, they're they're getting a little stronger, and they meet the city council fathers again, and they come up with a proposal that if they can get the money together, they, have, they were going to raise $20,000 was their goal. Could they put the, put they build this building downtown in a park? Well, the city fire said no. Well, finally time went on and the city was growing. The city was the growing city in the first 20 and years. And sure. Altos Park came to be one of the, what was a wonderful park. And it was, one, it was the finest park in Albuquerque at the time. This was like in the 70s. We're, we're, we're gone from, yeah. from the 50s, 50s all the 60s, way up to the 70s. 70s These ladies do late. not give up. It's a whole new generation of gardeners who have not given up on this project. So anyway, um, in the 70s, they negotiated with the city. They said, we'll come up with this money. And five families, five Albuquerque families, put up the down payment to get a loan from the bank to secure the funds to assure the city that they could do it. This five family, they had to raise $60,000. But I, I don't know what $190,000 is would what the building cost, what right. that would be today. So what happened then? Well, what happened then is the city said, OK, you can build it on, on at Los Altos. So they did. And of course, there was a swimming pool there and the baseball court and all that sort of thing. And now there's a skate park right there. So they did build it. And uh, it was a long time. They, they built it in about three years, and they got it paid for. And every one of those 29 garden clubs contributed. I mean, it was wow. like a, it was like a, they kept that fun going. And it's still an oasis. Oh, it's still an still oasis. Still there. And it's still there. Still I mean, almost the heart of Albuquerque But it's, it's, uh, it's pretty, it's more developed now because all of those gardens have been developed and matured, and the trees are gorgeous. And if so you, if people visit, what percentage of the people do you think of Albuquerque even know that it exists? Well, everyone who comes to the plant sale and that's hundreds of people but the plant sale started way back in the 50s and so we're now getting at the building the actual uh, garden center we're actually getting descendants 
of the original descendants of the descendants of the descendants of the original. And the garden sale is usually held in the spring, I imagine. It's in the spring, but uh, Okay, so yeah, that's those people know about it, or people go play baseball or something, but it's yeah. a, a beautiful facility, well, and you have you have the 29 guard centers, their representatives can be there to answer questions, but also you have classes. Tell me what else happens. Okay, after. what else happens is uh, we have the tomato fiesta for one thing. <laughs> we, we have the plant sale, the big plant sale. We have, What's a tomato fiesta? Oh, the tomato fiesta. Have you not been to the pi tomato fiesta? The have you been to America? Yet? <laughs> Everyone should come to the tomato fiesta. Okay, it's well, the event of the season. I mean, you come. The the tomato boys have been seeding. All the master gardeners have been seeding tomatoes, so they've got all these different varieties of tomatoes. They have a tomato testing line, and so you come by and you take a taste of this tomato, and you find out which tomato you want to buy or which tomato plant you want to buy. You have kids have face painting. There's all kinds of educational programs going on. It's just a, a wonderful what, event. What part of the year is that? It's August. It's August, it's and it will August. Ha probably happen this year because of the... Uh, it will not happen? No, it probably will happen because yeah. of the relief from the pandemic so and from our restrictions. Would you say the tomato plant is one of the plants most grown in people's homes? Uh, I would think. Everybody who wants to, to wants to, a vegetable in their garden plants a tomato plant. Okay. And, and there are lessons at the tomato fiesta and through the garden, the garden center itself on how to, how to best prepare your, your tomato plant for planting. For example, I'll just tell you, okay, you get this little plant. Let's say you buy a little plant, okay? It's got a root, okay? Here's a little plant, here's a little root, okay? You don't plant it straight down. You dig your hole like this, and you plant a little bit of the stem into the ground, and you let that root come along horizontally with the soil. What happens I think then? why, because it gets the nutrients and yes. the water. And it doesn't get that. the water way down there. Yes. I wouldn't have thought that until That's you That's one of the things, but then that. the roots do this. They grow like this, so you get a really sturdy plant. And you, it, it's a wonderful. But how would you know that? I didn't know. You until wouldn't you know that unless you, unless you, of course, are, go to the tomato fiesta or, or a master gardener take the master gardener program. That's something else that has been really helpful. But aren't there a lot of tomatoes grown in pots as well? Oh, big pots like oh, this. Big pots, but as still a with the root fact, have to go. Yeah, because you can keep the soil perfectly right for the tomato. These big, you know, those big tubs. Lots of people do that. The tomato boys, uh, the. Why do you call experts. tomato? Who are the, because who are the tomato boys? Well, the tomato boys, I, I don't know if they're still in existence, but when I the last time I was at the tomato, at the Master Gardener program, they were still there. And that was just re very recently. But they're guys that have their thing. Guys like vegetables. <laughs> guys like growing vegetables. Ladies, for some, ladies like it too. But, you know, when you kind of decide who's going to be the vegetable garden gardener, it's generally a guy. And guys love to plant vegetables and tomatoes are one of the things they love. So these guys got together and they always made a presentation about how about tomatoes, what kinds there were, how to plant them, when to plant them, what to do. What kinds are there? I mean, I oh, oh, you're well, not asking your tomato boy. You're asking. Well, there's like there's the, you have the little yellow uh, sun sun drop right? tomatoes. You okay. have the cherry tomatoes. You have the big beef eater tomatoes. You have early ripening tomatoes. You have small tomatoes. You Holy have medium cow. sized tomatoes. You have Heirloom tomatoes, purple ones, yellow ones, lots of heirloom tomatoes are, are you can find now even in stores. So, so they do the festival in August just to prepare you for the coming season to what to buy because don't don't well, a lot of people start their tomatoes. They start them early. Early. But, yeah, and I think I think I'm right about the tomato fiesta. Okay, we'll in, see. In Ju late they can July go on August. your website. Yeah. The Council of Albuquerque Garden Clubs yes. to find out more information or about stop the, in about to, the tomato if, fiesta. If we stop into the garden club, what do we see there? There are a lot of gardens around the club. Oh, there's a fabulous garden. Well, you're going to you're going to go into the entrance, and you're going to find this gorgeous fountain, which was uh, the gift of one of the garden clubs. Uh, beautiful fountain, and all of the garden clubs have contributed to what's in this garden count, the garden center. As right, you go in, there's a hallway. There are wonderful, huge, big meeting room, the patio room, and the major room where we have the master gardener classes, and that is something else that the garden center provides a space for about 150 people during the Master Gardener training program, that and which lasts about three months from January, February, March, and it ends in April. Um, so, What does it take to be a Master Gardener? It takes, it takes attending a class every Tuesday for those for eight, for, through January, February, March, and part of April. Okay. You take a test. You take a test of the materials. You listen to these wonderful lectures with uh, people from experts from uh, New Mexico State University, from our local um, 
extension agency, Sarah Moran Duran, uh, Joe Sice was one of those early extension agents, Joran Veers who... What's the advantage of being a master gardener? Oh, the learning is incredible. But the obligation is also there too. You need, you need, presently you need 10 hours of classes every year. You need to take 10 hours worth of education. And you need to volunteer 40 hours. But I, 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 I usually volunteer, my volunteer hours this year may be lower than ever, but I usually have about 180. So the, so the Garden Club, of course, is not owned by, it's on a city park, but it's really not it, run by no, the No, it's city. owned by the Council of Albuquerque Gardens. They own this they building. Own this. They, that is one of the and things. And they man it. It's no, no taxpayer and dollars. They, and they restore it, and they, they uh, take care of it, and they water it, and they... But you said walk. Okay, we're walking in past okay. the room for so the you're gonna see the gardeners. I want to hear two, about the two to two beautiful rooms. There's a lovely bathroom that's just been remodeled by one of our uh, okay. members. Then you have a garden shop, which is garden shops are really something that the public ought to know about because you can buy there tax free, and they have all of the things that prop, most of the things that you need as a gardener. They have tools, they have decorative art, they have books on gardening, they have guides on wildflowers, seed, seed packets. Seed packets, yes, and really quality seed packets. They have, I said gardening tools, essential gardening yeah. tools. They have um, uh, supplies like um, uh, blood meal, things that you want to put in your garden, uh, uh, z a fertilizer, grass fertilizer, huge bags oh, of grass right. fertilizer. They have What's soil amenders. What's the difference amenders. between buying there and buying at a nursery? You don't pay tax. But why don't you pay tax? Because it's a because the garden, the it's Council of Albuquerque Gardens is a 501 wow. okay. C3 wow. nonprofit, and that is one of the advantages of a nonprofit. And your mission is to promote. And we good, are nonprofit, actually. And your mission is to promote good gardening and provide guidance to the right. community well, about. To, along that, best. Out of the, right outside the um, garden uh, shop is a little room where the master gardeners man the hotline. The hotline, I don't, do you know what that is? Only because I'm prepared for the show. <laughs> okay. Yes, I didn't know before. The hotline is the master. People can call in and say, my mulberry has whatever and blah, blah, blah. And they say, what is wrong with it? The master gardeners, are there are two of them, and they, they either know the answer or they um, say, we'll call you back. We'll look it up and we'll find out. And they look it up and they find out. If they can't solve the problem, they send you to the extension agent and they solve the problem. But most of the time, most of the time, quite frankly, the problems that you have in, in gardening are water. Overwatering. Overwatering, <laughs> underwatering, infrequent watering. That's what happens. Or watering, watering irregularly. Oh. Irregularly. You've got to water regularly. Just like you, you've got to have water on a regular basis. You can't go for three days without it and then drink a ton. Oh, Neither wow. can plants. Also, what I like is that your facility is you, you rent it out for weddings and meetings oh. and anything it's a great place to get wow. a wedding a wedding reception you can have a, a party there you could have a graduation how party much does there. it cost to rent it that you have to talk to to um to the to the secretary there the person who is our on-site manager is it used quite often oh uh, very often it wasn't used this year unfortunately no, of course, no but it has been used Yo, oh, yes wow. it's used all the time and it can be decorated. And we had graduation parties. We've had, you know, birthday parties. We've had all kinds of. Uh, also, you cut. Well, you bring flowers to the nursing homes, and you sponsor the flower shows at the state fair. Tell me a little bit oh, about that. Well, that is a gigantic. That is a gigantic. Well, project. we've seen the flower show at the state okay. fair, but I thought that was. No, you know who's doing that? No, you know who's you. organizing that? <laughs> <laughs> the Council of Albuquerque Gardens is organizing that, and Master Gardeners play a big role in st in staffing that. It's huge. You set up the tables, you set up the plants, you help people who don't know how to show their flower, and that. And I would like to put a plug here for everybody who has a flower that they like. Please bring it to the flower show and enjoy it because. It's, they'll sh help you all What of these, building are you in? The fl well, the flower building, we've always been in the flower building. This a building dedicated to okay. that. Okay. But they think they're going to move us, so I don't know where that's okay, going to be. Okay, but the flower building is usually where we, what I recall about it, you just see a lot of flowers on display. And don't you remember the flower arrangements? And yes. And all judged, yes. first yes. prize, yes. Yes. second yes. prize. And then there's an orchid display and a cactus display at the, the flower show. And the but it's that whole area is run organized by the Albuquerque Council of... The Council of Albuquerque Gardens, absolutely. Wow. And staffed by the same people. 
That's quite a com that's quite a that's commitment. That's a huge. That's and why that's why the Garden Council is really such a benefit to the community as a whole. I mean, it, we're out there teaching, educating, holding classes, giving instruction. We're we're ready to help. Also, you have a children's program. Yes, the a garden. Camp. Garden, garden camp. That's just a, that's a new program, and that's just ex very exciting. We've got to get kids young, interested in the nature and the environment, and into. You the, do all that with the council. We do. Why is it called the council? The council. Okay. Of, real quick, because I, I want to go through all the what these plans. Okay. And we're doing fine. another show with you as well. But okay. Twenty-nine garden clubs have evolved into or devolved into sixteen stronger organizations. Okay. So. Um, it, what happened is they needed somebody to kind of hold them together. Uh, to, alone, they weren't able to find the plants they needed. They weren't able to have much clout. But together, they, we are a, a complete garden unit. <laughs> and that's why we're the Council of Albuquerque okay. Gardens. Is there a membership? Yes. And, and I really don't know what the membership is, but you but have to dues be, if you, you have to be, be and if you're in a garden club, you pay a certain percentage of your dues to the club, go to the garden council. And I, I it's, oh wait, I do know. For for master gardener, it's fifty dollars to be a master gardener, and some of that money goes to the council. Like in some community communities I've been to, Francis, I've seen plots of land that they, the city has given for people to go plant. I, the community, I guess they're called yeah, community, community gardens. gardens. Do right. we have those in? No, we don't have. We, we don't, don't have, have room for them. We have a major. We have a gorgeous park-like garden, and we have a, and we have a. The, the Native Plant Society maintains a section of the, of the grounds for their garden. The Cactus and Succulent Society maintains another little section. The Iris Society has a little oh. section in the big garden for theirs. The Daylily Society does this. We have a, um, a na Native Plant Society garden. I mean, it's just... It's how, many, how many acres do you have? 4.5. That large. Yes, that's large. Anything inside, any displays inside or everything's outside? Mm, well, it's just a nice building inside. But okay, but outside of you have four outside and a half acres. Of the garden. Wow, all that huge mm -hmm. variety. And, and the public is invited to come and tour those gardens. Anytime. For free. For free, yeah. You just, wow. If the gate's locked, you just ask the manager to open it for you. What are the hours? Uh, of the 9 to 2.30. 9.30 to 2.30. Well, that's not very long. No. What happens at 2.30? The manager goes home. <laughs> well, what if I want to go after work? Oh, well, on the I weekends. guess you could make special arrangements. What about the come. weekends? Oh, yeah, you can come on the weekends. Is your, your priority goal, of course, is to help answer questions and beautify. You also work with the city on their beautification projects. Your council of Albuquerque yes. Garden Clubs is an advisory to this. We are. That's true. That's a big role. Uh -huh. It's a huge role. Uh, you just said something about um, the time, 9.30 to 2.30. 9.30 to 2.30. Um, the, 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 the garden center is open often for, for like meetings and so forth. You can come then too. Okay, we can come yeah. then. Yeah. But again, helping with the beautification project because that's, I'm sure, these gardens oftentimes might be private in their yards, but it could be in the front. Right. And your goal also is not to use much water, but to use Xeriscape. Right. And tell me a little about Zurich plants. We've heard well, of how Zurich interesting, because Zurich. I just happened to have brought about five or six Okay, of them. <laughs> which was an effort. Thank you again. All right. Now, you want me to tell you about the Zurich plants? All right. And we only have a few minutes left. Okay. These, all of these plants are Zurich. And that, what that means is they're not zero landscape plants. They are Zeric, X-E-R-I-C, which means they will thrive in our climate, in our poor soils, and they will do it with, as, with little water. Not as, they're not going to do it with no water. You have to water them, but they won't require as much water as other kinds of plants. These are gorgeous um, uh, daisies, little daisies. I'd tell you the name of them, but just fine, look daisies. for a cute little daisy. This is a salvia. If it says salvia on the package anywhere, buy it because salvia is an incredible plant. This is a, 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 a bacopa, which is a great plant for, for, um, for um, uh, planterists like this. These are sun ticks or these are coreopsis. There are about 25 versions and brands and varieties of coreopsis. So it's they not are, a daisy? It's, it's, it, well, a coreopsis is a daisy. Oh, okay. But some of them are called tick seeds. That's a tick seed because it has a dark center and a yellow, light yellow petals. This is another salvia. Fabulous blooming oh. thing. It'll bloom all the time. This, oh, what do you mean all the time? It'll just, if I keep, if, if I keep it properly trimmed, this will bloom all summer. 
Really? And, and maybe into the fall. Salvia. Yeah, this is salvia, S-A-L-V-I-A. -A. And if you see that on a, on a plant marker, just buy it. It's going to be wonderful. This is uh, rice grass. And it, the reason I brought this one, I was going to bring a fabulous grass called Carl Forrester, but it was really too big for me to bring. But this one, it looks like it. And it's gorgeous grass. And this land we're living on is basically a grassland. So w the grasses thrive here. If you think about it, when you go out at, driving anywhere to, to Santa Fe or anywhere, you don't see a lot of big trees naturally. What you see is grassland. And that's why grasses, we're a grassland. That's why they thrive here. This back one is a caryopterus, called a blue night caryopterus, another plant that is just gives and gives and gives and won't give out on you. It, uh, <laughs> it gives and gives, but it won't give out. It won't out. give out on you. It'll just keep blooming like that. It's a beautiful plant. Now, I'll tell you how beautiful and how, how, how uh, re reliable these are. This is on the medians. Some of the, the, the medians, you will see this caryopterus, blue night. You will see grasses on the medians. You will even see salvias on the medians. And you will see a lot. If you see a plant on a median, you know that that's going to be a plant that's a xeric plant, because that's the way they're designed. That's it. How much water does it need if you plant it in your backyard? Not very much, but you have to pl that that depends a lot on your backyard. If you have shade, you're going to need less water. If you have uh, if I, I have a I have a fire strip in one in a place in my yard, that I couldn't water enough for that place, so I just put plants that are so hardy they're they're fire strip proof, and that's they're hard they are hard to find. So oh, that was another thing I wanted to add. You know, if you see on a label and it says full sun, that does not mean full sun Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh. That's really, you, full sun, our full sun, because we're so high, our altitude is so high, we have um, very little to protect us, very little atmosphere to protect us from the sun, and we need to have some, some relief. No plant can just take it. The ones that can take it are the ones that you can go out, uh, patchy plume, probably can take full sun, it can, it has to, and a lot of cactus and a lot of succulents can take it, but you got to be careful with that. Don't take that literally on a plant. If we need more information, where can we get it, Francis? Where you can get it from me? Or you no, know, where you can get it from, get it from the Council of Albuquerque Garden <laughs> call Clubs. A, call the hotline. Call the hotline. What number is that? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know that. Oh, you can call 296-296-6020. That'll get you to it eventually. The hotline. Uh, Do you have a web page? Uh, yes. And uh, it's uh, albuquerquegardencenter.org. That's easy. They can That's find easy. the number yeah. there. You'll find all that material there. You are a delight. You have a passion for oh, gardening. Oh, I do. I love it. And we are called what here? High, high desert? What? High desert. High altitude, desert environment, blazing sun. <laughs> OK? <laughs> but beautiful, nonetheless. Beautiful. And if you want to see more beauty, visit the Council of Albuquerque's Garden Clubs right over I-40 in Louisiana. Thank <laughs> okay. you so much. Appreciate you, Francis Robertson, the publicity chair for this committee. So we'll have her on again with more gardening tips for you. Thanks for watching. Make it a great week with your family. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Issues and Answers with your host Diane Kinnewater is presented as a public service to inform, educate, and better the lives of New Mexicans. To comment on today's program or to purchase a copy of any Issues and Answers program, visit sunbroadcasting.org or call us at 505-345-1991.